All right, guys, here's one I know a lot of you have been dying to see. So this is maintenance tool. This is the software that you hook up to their, uh, to their unit and allows you to see all this data. As you can see, it's all just numbers and uh, acronyms. There's nothing in here that tells you you're good to go or something's wrong. You have to determine that yourself from all this data. So to break it down, up here, from here to here is one outdoor unit. From here to here is the other outdoor unit. This is the branch controller. And then down here you have all of your indoor units. So you can see this is the capacity of the indoor units. Okay, so that's the tonnage, 48, four ton. Uh, this is the address of the indoor units. This is the group number, you can get into that later. Branch number, uh, that tells you what port on the branch controller it is. So like I said in the last video, we can have up to 16 ports on our branch controller. We need to know what port goes to which unit uh, for several different reasons. So you can see the 96 is on branch number one, 14 is on branch number three. Okay, so over a certain tonnage, you need to have two ports on your branch controller going to the one unit. Okay, if we go down to a 48, you can see it's branch number seven, then eight, then nine. Okay, so those are all just on one port. But this one is on two ports because we have one and branch two or port two and then we go to three this is also a 96 so it's on port three and four and then we go to five okay not to get into the weeds too much there okay but th1 that's your indoor temperature so that's either what the uh, return air temperature sensor is seeing or the uh, thermostat depending on how you are sensing temperature you can do either one th2 Okay, you can see that's the uh, pipe going in after the metering device. We're in cooling and all of these. And then TH3 is the outlet of the coil. In heating mode, TH3 is gonna be the inlet because we're sending hot gas into the coil. And then TH2 is gonna be the outlet. Okay, so next we have our superheat and subcooling on our indoor unit. That you usually want to see around 0 to 15 in uh, cooling and 9 to 27 subcooling in heating. LI, that's your uh, metering device. So these have LEVs, linear expansion valves, not TXVs, not electronic expansion valves, even though LEV, same thing pretty much. Uh, that tells you how wide open your LEV is. So 41 is closed. So whenever you see 41, you come over here, you can see cooling's off. So 41 on pretty much any valve, whether it's in the outdoor unit or uh, the indoor unit, means it's closed. You can see this one's opening up to 203. Those valves will modulate to maintain that superheat. So we could have a dirty coil, or a dirty filter and a dirty coil. Uh, and that LEV, if it sees very low superheat, it's just gonna throttle down. So they have a very wide range uh, and they're constantly adjusting based on temperatures. Um, mode, operating, mode, you can put it in auto so it's gonna automatically switch between heating and cooling. State, run, whatever. Uh, indoor coil state, I'm assuming. Uh, cool on, cool off, let's say heating, so on and so forth, fan, uh, whatever speed the fan is at. <coughs> So we come up to our outdoor unit. So I'll start off by saying the ones that I'm mostly paying attention to. I'm paying attention to everything, but high up on that list is our TH4. That's our discharge temperature right off of our compressor. Want that around 150 in cooling, uh, 180 or so in heating. Definitely always below 200. Uh, or 212 they say, but I like to keep it under 200. Uh, that's just 
a lot better for the compressor. Uh, our TH5 is our inlet into the accumulator. Not to the compressor, but into our accumu accumulator. Uh, TH7 is our outdoor temp, and TH15 is our compressor shell temperature. So that uh, thermistor is on the bottom of our compressor, and that's sensing compressor temperature. We use that to determine if the, the unit is overcharged, or I should say the unit uses that. Um, I believe it's 25 degrees superheat. It wants to see 25 degrees of superheat between our saturate, saturated suction temperature and our TH15. Uh, that tells the unit, you know, if we have zero degrees of superheat, that we're probably pulling liquid into our compressor and we'll go off on overcharge. Uh, TH16, 17, and 18, those are our accumulator temperatures. So we have a band wrapped around our accumulator uh, that senses the temperature so we can determine how much refrigerant is sitting in our accumulator. You can see quite a bit right now because we have 45, 47, and 46. Uh, so our accumulator is pretty full. Same thing with down here, 16, 17, and 18, all pretty close to the same temperature. Um, what else? So our, our unit, so TE or target evap temp is very critical. When we're in cooling only, our compressor is going to do whatever it needs to do to maintain a 32 degree saturation temperature. This unit could be a total charge of 150 pounds, and you could be 120 pounds low, and this unit doesn't really care because all it's gonna do is maintain that 32 degrees. So that compressor is gonna ramp down. All your indoor temperatures are gonna be extremely high. All your thermostat temperatures, your room temperatures are gonna be extremely high because we're low on gas. But you'll notice up here, this F, that's our compressor frequency. You'll notice that's not really speeding up. So you have a high load and your compressors seem to be running at like 30 hertz, okay? You would expect to see them running harder when you have a high load. So basically, like I said, that, that unit's gonna do whatever it needs to. If it's at 32 and we're barely running and all of a sudden it goes up to 40, our compressor is gonna ramp up and then it's gonna pull that down to 16 degrees and then the compressor, the unit's gonna freak out, slow down again, it's gonna bring that temperature back up to 32, and then it's gonna try to hold 32. So it really is gonna fight and do whatever it needs to do to uh, maintain that 32 degrees. Now, you might be saying 32 degrees saturation, that's freezing, we're gonna freeze our coil. Well, no. Uh, we run 32 degrees because we account for pressure drop. We're all the way up on the roof. This unit is for the first floor. That's six stories down. So if we have a 32 degree saturation temperature up here, we probably have 40, 45 degree saturation temperature at the actual unit. And then by the time we get up to the roof, a lot of pressure drop dragging along those pipe walls brings the pressure down 32 degrees. Uh, in heating only, just trying to keep it simple, we're just talking heating and cooling only, not heating main or cooling main. Um, you're looking at your target condensing, okay? Your target condensing in heating only, it wants to hit 120 degrees, okay? So your compressor will ramp up and maintain that 120 degrees. So those are the numbers you really want to look at. Um, the other important ones are down here at our branch controller. So SC1, and SC6. We have two tube in tube heat exchangers in our branch controller. Okay, so basically it's subcooling. And our on our first one, we want to see between 9 and 27 degrees of subcooling. Our second one, we want to see 27 to uh, I think it's like 54 degrees of subcooling. Superheat. We want to see about four, but it's going to constantly change. You can see we lost five degrees there and a few degrees there. These things are a moving target. You have to watch these and be patient. If you have any skill you need to learn when you work on these is patience. You need to be patient. Patient. 
It's very critical. You should not be diagnosing a system when you've only watched it run for less than an hour. Because there are multiple things that could be showing signs of a low charge or uh, you can have a, a valve bypassing, um, a stuck um, four-way valve. There's an endless amount of things that could be wrong that look like other things. So you need to be patient and watch this. Uh, so our superheat, we want to see about four degrees. And that's after our subcoolers. I know it's quite confusing. Let's go to our diagram. So we're coming from our outdoor unit here. Okay, this is our liquid separator. So we're taking hot gas off the top and we're taking liquid off the bottom. Okay, we're only we're in cooling only right now. So we're just taking the liquid. So we've got lightly, lightly subcooled liquid coming down. Goes through our uh, heat exchanger right here. Like I said, this is one of those tube and tube heat exchangers. This is where we get our subcooling. Come out, 84 degrees. Okay, then we go into our second subcooler. We come out and we're at 66. Okay, so we just dropped like 20 degrees. So, like I said, come in from our outdoor unit into our first heat exchanger. We lose some of that heat, gain a lot of liquid, come out, go through our second one. Now, you can pretty much guarantee 60 degrees, we're a solid column of liquid. Okay, so we steal some of that liquid, flash it into the, the second subcooler, and then we go back to the first, and then we go back to our suction line, back to our compressor. Okay. So we're aiming for four degrees superheat after both of our um, heat exchangers. Okay, so that's that's where you're seeing that SH2. That's where it wants to see that superheat. So just to give you an idea of what's going on, this is your outdoor unit. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of check valves, okay? There's a lot of strainers. All kinds of strainers. You guys need to be purging with nitrogen when you braze. It's very serious, it's very critical. Uh, you don't even wanna know, and I sure don't wanna know what would happen or what the symptoms would be. If you have a clogged strainer, and they are not easy to replace either. So you've got all of this piping in one tiny little area. Okay, so we've got our compressor. Okay, we come to our four-way valves, and we decide are we sending that hot gas to our coils outside, or are we sending that hot gas inside? Or one of our different modes. But like I said, we're trying to keep it easy, trying to not throw too much at you guys. So in this case, we're sending our hot gas to our outdoor coils. So through our four-way valves, sorry the screen's so tough to see, to our outdoor coils, long story short, um, turning into a lightly subcooled liquid. You can see we're 90, 98 degrees after our coils. Go inside to our branch controller. Branch controller then says, do we need hot gas? Who needs hot gas? Who needs liquid? Uh, but in this mode, we're just in straight cooling, okay? So this is all inside the branch controller as well. We have all of our solenoids and all of our check valves, okay? So our liquid's coming in and just say, uh, We'll go to like this unit up here. So our liquid's coming in and we come up here. Ah, I'll just make it easy for you guys. So liquid's coming in, we follow it down. Okay, so liquid's going in. We go through our check valve. There we go. Follow it over. All the way over to one of our indoor units. Okay, liquid comes in, flashes, goes to our coil. Okay, comes back. You can see our TH2 or TH4, which is discharge temp, but not every unit uses that. TH1 and TH3. So you can see right after our LEV, we're at 43 degrees. 
and after we're at 50. Then we come back, and then, so you can see this is one of our bigger units. We've got two liquid lines and two suction lines. So two ports on our branch controller here for our liquid and two ports for our suction. Um, so we come back as suction gas, go through our A and C solenoids, which thank God they made that easy at least. A and C is for cooling, B is for heating. Come back and then we just go back to our outdoor unit again. Um, then in heating, we would close our A and C solenoids, open our uh, B, and then we would flow to our indoor unit, and then we'd come back as liquid, okay? We're gonna come back up here, and then we're gonna go over here. Okay, so we have lightly subcooled because we were heating with hot gas, we condensed that into uh, liquid. Okay, we come back and we go through our subcooler again to be subcooled. Come back up to our LEV flash. Uh, and that's where we get a lot, most of our flashing uh, and heating, depending on the load. Then we go back to the outdoor unit. So like I said, I know there's a lot to this. Um, it gets easier. But you guys, you gotta kind of work on it often. Uh, otherwise you kind of start to forget. So, all this other stuff, you can see uh, QJC, that's our cooling load. It's like kilojoule, I don't, I don't know what their logic is behind that. And heating, uh, same thing, kind of shows the heat load. BDC, that shows the uh, bus voltage uh, off the inverter for the compressor. This shows all our amperage on our compressor. So 13 amps, 13 amps. Shows our fan RPM, our LEV 5A and 5B. Uh, those are our LEVs that flash uh, during heating mode. Those LEV 5A in particular, it does like to um, burn out and you could be sending uh, refrigerant to where you aren't wanting it to go. Uh, I'm sure I'll see one of those, I think I even have a video of it on my Instagram happening. Um, but I'll show you what happens. So this is where the refrigerant diagram comes in handy. If you don't have this, go on my link drive and find the diagram for that unit. Okay. But you've got a LEV 5A and 5B. Okay. If they are starting to lose track, it thinks it's closed when it really is like half open. Okay. So you can see hot gas right here and suction over here. Well, that's higher pressure than that, okay? So you could have hot gas making its way through this LEV that it thinks is closed. Like I said, 41 is closed, but it might have lost a coil in there and it thinks it's closed, it's really half open. So you're gonna send hot gas through here. You're gonna come down and you're gonna come back up and Okay, so you're gonna come down, you're gonna send that hot gas into the suction side, come back, and you'll see that high temperature right there on your TH5. So, that's bypassing high pressure, look close to low pressure, you're gonna be sending that hot gas and you're gonna be wondering why you have an extremely high TH5 and your compressor is going to be hating life. You have it in, um, heating mode too. So I think that's really it. This unit's working just fine. So when I get a unit that's not working as it should, I will take some videos of that where we can see it firsthand. I highly recommend if you work on these a lot and you don't understand the refrigerant circuit, you uh, go on my link drive, go to R2 series, uh, find the refrigerant circuit diagram and just start coloring in. You know your compressor's right here, right? Well, what comes off your compressor? Hot gas. So go that way. Decide, um, do I want it in full cooling mode or full heating mode and just draw it out. Um, if you get to something like, like this check valve and you don't know what uh, way it's going, well, color in this way or start coloring in this way. So, boom, stops right there. 
So you must have hot gas on this side or, you know, your hot gas is going to be slamming that shut. So you're not going to be flowing that way. Um, yeah, just study, guys. I'm probably never going to show how to hook up the maintenance tool because if you don't know how to do that, I don't think you should be working on these. You need to go get uh, training from Mitsubishi. Go to your local rep. Um, get some training. It's very critical. These systems require a lot of attention and a lot of detail and doing things right. Raising with nitrogen, your, your good practices. You've got to do things right or these things will fall apart and then you're gonna be hating VRF when really it's you. So, these things are very robust. They don't fail. Um, if they do, it's more than likely our fault as uh, people installing them. So, don't talk crap about it unless you have a genuine reason to. I hear that a lot, is everyone hates VRF because it's crap. Well, it's not. So, and it's sooner or later gonna be everywhere. And you're gonna be SOL if you refuse to learn it or refuse to work on it. You're gonna be very worthless to your company. Not worthless, but you're not you're gonna be worth less than the guy that knows chiller boilers and VRF. So highly recommend you get with the times and start learning. Cool. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Sorry for the terrible picture quality. But uh, we'll get better as we go along.